All right, I'm here with Marcus Nispel and Frederick Malmberg, and uh, thank you guys for sitting in with us. Good. Yes. Um, what are the benefits and challenges of rebooting a franchise like Conan the Barbarian, and were you both big fans of the 1982 John Milius Conan film? Well, uh, you have a character like Conan, you, it comes with a great responsibility, so it's not really as much as a director's unique vision, as it's an amalgamation of what the character went through in time. There are the original books by Robert E. Howard, there were paintings by Frank Frazetta, there was a movie done on the height of the disco era, there was a uh, incredible series of uh, Dark Horse comics, other comics, video games, and Fred pretty much has been uh, the keeper of all of this. Well, I mean, uh, the the uh, benefits are obvious. It's a it's a potential franchise uh, that's sitting there uh, for the making. Uh, the challenges are also obvious because um, it's a totally different market now uh, than in 1982 when they made the Millie's movie. And to I think I speak for both of us, we, we were both big fans of the original movie and of the stories and the comic books of Fra Frazetta's uh, interpretations. But to be true to all of that. It represented a big challenge because that meant we wanted to do an R-rated movie. It had to have a certain scope. It needed to be a big movie, uh, and all of that together made it a, a t uh, quite a feat to make this movie. And I think um, Marcus was an obvious choice because he uh, he got the character right away. We we uh, hit it off when we met, and uh, he understood the world and and everything. But it was it was definitely challenging. How, uh, how long have you been trying to reboot Conan before uh, Marcus was brought in? I tried to reboot it for 10 years, since 2001. Oh, wow. Uh, and spent the first five, six years in the studio system, um, butting my head against the rating and, you know, just the, 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 the whole process of making it at the big studios, as opposed to when we took it out in 2007, uh, Paradox, the company that I run, uh, who owns Conan and, and does all the things Conan, uh, and we made a strict progress to production deal with uh, Avi Lerner's Millennium and immediately went into script uh, writing and immediately went into the director's search and, and, and it was quite fast once we uh, got going. And Fred didn't idle around, so in that time, just because not a Conan movie was made, yet loads of these comic books and, and, and video games uh, came to fruition. and. Um, to me, the access was always Frank Frazetta. I'm a painter by, by uh, background, and uh, I'm also a huge John Milius fan. John told me, Marcus, you got to do a Conan movie, and he had actually a Conan script in development at uh, Warner's at the time, and Rodriguez was attached, and then later it changed to another script, to another studio, and Ratner was attached. And so I, I started following it, and I wanted to do it. But I know what John wouldn't have wanted me to do, and certainly what I wasn't inclined to do was to essentially remake his movie. You know, it was always clearly understood by everyone that we would go back to the original material of this amalgamation that it all became, um, you know, a, a, a good parable maybe for this is uh, I come out of commercials, did a lot of commercials for Mercedes. Mercedes is a great philosophy for a car, right? Sometime in the 40s they made a great diesel, it's a great collector's item. Now, that doesn't mean that development stops there. That is not a reason for me not to drive the sleek new model. I still like to collect the one, you know, from, from, from back then. Um, I think with a character like Conan it's the same way. Conan is not to be understood like many other movies or some great movies, greater movies than I will ever make, like Citizen Kane or Casablanca. Well, they don't make actions figures based on that. They don't dress up like that for Halloween. Um, so what is it about a character that is so innately in us, so primarily in our DNA costume, that makes filmmakers want to make them over and over again, kids to, you know, interpret them on the playground and whatnot. Um, that's really what Fred does. That's the idea of Conan and he keeps that alive. Was it hard casting the part of Conan the Barbarian, and what impressed you the most about Jason Momoa's performance that got him the part? 
Oh, it was it was very hard. It was very hard because we uh, we went to casting directors all over the world, Scandinavia, New Zealand, Australia, England, wherever. And they would send us in audition tapes, and uh, usually audition tapes, uh, you know, that you film an actor, they're sitting in a closet uh, with bad lighting, it's just, you know, and, and um, we probably auditioned 150, 200 guys. Either they were big, brawny bodybuilders who, who could not even speak the lines, or they were scrawny, small guys who just clearly were not Conan. And there was one in those tapes, I don't remember exactly when, but I remember I skipped, skipped it very fast because it was... Uh, big guy with dreadlocks and a big beard almost like that and he was looking down so there was no lighting on his face so it was just a big brow and he was growling and uh, Marcus kept saying well oh, there is one guy here you should take another look at and then I remember you took him in for a second read and we were never really the producers were like ah, I'm not so sure I'm not so sure and then Marcus kept saying I'm, I'm thinking this is the guy and we were all running around talking about other names. And then Marcus, on his own, said, I'm going to take this guy in and put some clothes on and give him a sword and, and put some... And you did that little movie. And then he shows it to me. And I'm like, that's the guy. That's the guy. I, I was still trying to give them the feeling that they discovered him themselves yeah, no, by no, being no, very was low key. Yeah. I was very excited yeah. that I found him. No, uh, Mar Marcus found him. I'll be, well, well uh, 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 you know, it, it came on a tape, so Kerry Borden must have taking it down, but, but uh, you know, to, to find him and to get him through the door are two different things. Yeah. Avi Lerner, the producer, he's from Israel, he said, uh, he always had one question for me, always, he says, so Marcus, who's going to be the Conan? <laughs> I go, I don't know, but I know, uh, you know, I knew I didn't want to engage him in a bodybuilding contest. I knew um, that it wasn't a look-alike contest. I said to Avi, I said, you know what? I know what kind of a guy he has to be. He has to be the kind of guy that can grab a woman's ass and right here, right now, and get away with it. <laughs> I, I would get slapped across the face, but he most likely would get laid. And Avi says, uh, that is true. He says, what is it? I can grab a woman's ass, I get away with it. My brother Danny does, he does not get away with it. What is it? I said, it's called chutzpah, Avi. <laughs> it's chutzpah, we gotta find a Conan. It's chutzpah, so that made it exponentially harder. Who has that? Uh, Sean Connery has that, right? Uh, George Lazenby didn't. That's the only difference. Maybe maybe George Lazenby is a better actor, we will never know. But he wouldn't get away with a script like Conan, uh, or, or Zardoz, or, you know, uh, uh, James Bond for that matter, because if you don't enjoy the guy for being bad, you won't enjoy him in Conan. The moment you have a guy where you say, well, this is that politically correct, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, well, he's a man's man. He is a man's man, and he's also. Uh, but that means uh, he can actually, I think, go across <laughs> all four demographics if with the right cast. And I think Jason just. We were so right. We could see it already uh, now. After the fact, it's easy, but we could see that Game of Thrones was, you know, huge for him, and he has a big women following now. And but the guys aren't. You know, he's not a pretty boy. He's a man's man. He's he's really a cool cool guy. I'm, I'm at odds, I'm at odds with epics because uh, they were invented uh, by Cecil B. DeMille to get Bible Belt America to go to the movie houses. Movie houses were immoral places, dancing girls and, and gunslingers, you know, we're not going. And uh, he went and he made these biblical epics with very virtuous heroes, Charlton Heston would play most of them. I've seen two or three and then I got bored with that. Conan is the antithesis to that. He doesn't believe in any gods. He uh, is a straightforward guy and shoots first and asks questions later. And he's unapologetic. That's really the character you have to find. And uh, that's Conan. That made me want to make that movie. One last question. If you lived in Hyboria, would you be a thief, a barbarian, or a king? Wow. I'd definitely be behind Conan's back. <laughs> I'm definitely the barbarian type. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. No doubt.